Let's talk about common table expressions today. What is a CTE? CTE stands for common table expression. It is a temporary named result set, which you can use multiple times within a batch. This named result set is derived from a simple query and defined within the execution scope of a single select statement or an insert, update, delete, or even a merge statement. Let's straight away jump into action and look at a lot of different examples of a CTE. So for the purpose of demo, we are using AdventureWorks 2016. Now look at this very simple common table expression. The name of this named result set is sales underscore CTE. I'll just call it as sales CTE. You have also defined a column list here, but let's first jump into the query itself. This is the CTE query. Now, if you look at this query, it is a self-contained query, something like a self-contained subquery. So if I select this query and execute, it executes and is self-sufficient. Now this result set that you are seeing becomes a temporary named result set inside the memory. And the name given to this result set is sales underscore CTE. Now what's the whole idea and the purpose? The purpose is this named result set exists as long as the batch is alive. The life, the existence of this named result set is within the batch. And now we can use this named result set outside the scope of the query. So for example, here, if you see, we are selecting multiple columns from this name result set from sales underscore CTE. Now, if you look at this entire construct, let's do one thing. Let's first execute this entire thing. So with sales CTE, you have also specified the column list. Now this column list is optional. I'll come back to that in a while. And then this is the query of the CTE and this is the outer query that refers to or extracts data from this named result set. So let's go and execute this entire thing in totality. Now, important thing to note here is the with statement. So a common table expression will always start with a with statement or a with clause. And there are a lot of guidelines and uh, caveats and limitations with common table expressions. For example, inside the common table expression query, you cannot use, uh, let's say an order by clause and the workaround to that is you can use a top clause along with order by, then it works. You can't use an into clause. Uh, you can't use query hints, etc. So Microsoft documentation will be a good place to check uh, for all these things. And uh, when you are using common table expression within a batch with multiple lines of code, uh, please note the preceding statement has to be terminated with a semicolon. I'll try to show that to you a bit later. So let's go and execute this entire thing. So I've, I've selected with um, the CTE query and the outer query and let's go and execute and you get the output. Now let's move forward. In this next example, we are seeing the average number of sales order for all years with sales representatives. So the idea is very simple. Now, again, we have a common table expression query here and the outer query is extracting data is referring to this named result set. So let's go and execute and you get the output. Now, the interesting thing to note here is look at the outer query. So the outer query can continue to, you can continue to write your outer query as select statements as you would normally do with the table. So you could use your group by clauses, order by clauses, and you know, all these functions that you want to apply. Now, I'll just go back to the previous query once more because I remember I didn't talk about this column list. So this column list is optional. So let's say if I just comment this out, your CTE will still work. Because if you look at the outer query, look at the column names it is referring to. It is talking about salesperson ID. Um, it's talking about total sales and sales year. Now these three columns are coming from the CTE. So if you look at the CTE query, the CTE query also talks about salesperson ID and sales year. Now let's say if I uncomment this, okay, first I, I wanted to comment this and I wanted to execute. Does it work? Yes, of course it works. Simply because the column names that you're using in the outer query are same as the 
column names that you have used in the CTE query. But if you want to give it different names or, a, or something like analyze that you can do using the column list. So for example, if I don't want to call this as sales year, I want to call this as sales underscore year. Let's say I change it here, then suddenly you will now see all these red underlines there, right? Because now you, what you're trying to tell SQL, the execution engine here is that the sales year with, which is defined in the CTE query, you want to refer to it as sales underscore year in the outer query. So you can just replace sales here, here, and here, and here, and we are all good to go. So you may want to give more meaningful, uh, meaningful and elaborate names out there um, in the column list of CTE. Everything works well. Okay, let's move forward. Now, multiple CTE definitions in a single query. Now, this is where the power of a common table expression is when you compare it with other techniques like, let's say, derived table expressions. One is that you give it a name so you can refer a single CTE multiple times and you don't have to redefine it again and again. That's the beauty of the modular code here. And you can have multiple CTE definitions in a single query. This is very powerful. Now, look at this example with Again, starting off with sales underscore CTE. This is one CTE, sales underscore. Then we put a comma here, which is to separate the multiple CTE definitions. And we have put another one, sales underscore quota underscore CTE. And this is the definition for that. So in a single with statement, you have two CTE definitions. And again, they are self-sufficient, right? Like self-contained query. So if I execute this one, this is one named result set. And if I take this one, this is the second named result set. And then the outer query is referring to both of them. So you can see select something, something from sales CTE, and then you do a join with sales quota CTE. Beautiful coding techniques and mechanisms. Okay, so let's go and execute this. Incorrect syntax, business entity ID. Where are we getting this error from? Okay. Maybe this is referring to some other database or table that doesn't exist any which ways, but the code is perfectly fine. Let's move on. Oh, sorry. Me and my antics. Yes, now this should work. So I didn't select the other CTE and the width statement. So let's go and execute this and you get the output. Perfect. Now, all this was really simple stuff. The real power of common table expression comes into when you want to implement recursions, right? When you want to write recursive query. Let's take an example. You are creating an employees table. You have first name, last name, etc. And then there is something called as the manager ID, like who is the manager for a specific employee. And then you're inserting some names there. So what you need to know here is this guy, Ken, let's say, who is the chief executive officer, when we talk about his manager ID, it is null because he's the boss, he's not reporting to anybody, but then others are reporting to someone or the other. And so what do you really want to do? You want to kind of create an hierarchy. So let's go and first create a table like this and insert a few records. So we have the nine records that are inserted. Now you want to write a recursive query. Now this is the, uh, there is a tricky part here and let's look into that. First things first, the syntax remains same. So you have width and we are saying direct reports. So that's the name of the CTE. These are the column list as you already know now. This is your CTE query definition. Now the tricky part here with the CTE query definition is First, what you are doing is you are selecting the anchor member. Who is the anchor member, the top level boss? So if I say select the employee details where manager ID is null, let me execute this and show it to you. So you get this first record of the chief executive officer. Then you are doing an union all with this query with this result. And the trick here is that you are selecting the next employee and you are inner joining with the CTE itself, which triggers the recursion. In all these previous examples, if you know what I had done is I was trying to show you that the CTE query was self-contained, right? Because I could independently execute this and I was able to show you the temporary named result set. 
But in this example, it is not self-contained. You know, this is very similar to correlated subquery where the inner query is referring to attributes from the outer query. So now if I try to execute it, of course, because the CTE definition is not defined and is not available right now. If I execute this, of course, it's going to say invalid object named direct reports. So the CTE here, uh, the inner query, the CTE query is referring to itself, which triggers the recursion. So we call this as the anchor member and this is the recursive member. So this forms the result set when it executes with recursion. And then all you do is in the outer query, you're just selecting from direct reports and you can do your group by order by or whatever, right? So let's go and execute this and you get the employee level. Uh, and who reports to whom uh, you get that hierarchical structure. Hope this was useful. And yes, of course, I don't want to end the video without showing you the, the semicolon thing. So let's say what I was trying to do here is if I say select star from person dot person, something like uh, this, okay? And if, if I try to execute this together, it won't work. It will throw me an error. It says incorrect syntax, et cetera, et cetera. And it says if this is intended to be a CT, you need to explicitly terminate the previous statement with a semicolon, right? So the error here is quite descriptive and the idea is very simple. The preceding statement needs to be terminated with a semicolon. And we put a semicolon there and now it's all good. So when you execute this, hmm, Select star from PER. Okay, no problem. So this should be person dot person. That's where we go wrong. Okay, so let's go and execute this now. And you will see that you get the result set, which is from person dot person. And then you also get the CTE executed, right? So this is, please take a note of this. This is very, very important. Every now and then this uh, question comes up in the forum, my CTE is not executing. And and you know, in T-SQL, SQL Server uh, uses Transact SQL, right? Which is the uh, implementation of ANSI SQL, Microsoft specific implementation. S terminating a T-SQL statement with a semicolon is not a requirement, but when it comes to common table expression, for whatever reason, this is a requirement. The preceding statement has to be terminated with a semicolon. All right, so this was a quick video and a quick introduction to common table expressions in SQL Server. Hope you liked it. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sqlmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there. Video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands-on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter, at the rate SQL Maestros, and myself, A underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.